Hey, in this video, how are you doing, by the way? Probably going to have three videos dealing with basic techniques. Yes, I just touched my glasses. Dealing with basic techniques. So I think going out to externships, most of you have your skills pretty good, right? I, in my class, you guys are doing really well. But I think most people have trouble with loading sutures, passage sutures. Yeah, under a calm scenario, we all can do that. But getting used to doing that under pressure is probably something you should be doing, right? Having your a classmate doing it back and forth, adding some pressure in that scenario, right? Doctor drops a suture, loading it up real quick. But in this video, we're going to go over some basic techniques. This first one is just stemming from maybe some hand signals, making sure you know, because doctors, they don't like to talk, right? Um, and if they do talk, they mumble, right? <laughs> So basic uh, hand signals. Uh, how to load up a suture, right? Where is the correct way to load up? How is the correct way? How do you pass that suture to the doctor, right? Now, most surgical technologists, these are basic skills, right? And you're learning this in your program, I imagine now. Uh, but I would advise you to get really well at that before you go out to externships. That being said, you will get better. That's what extra externships is for, right? Getting better with these basic skills that you acquired from your surgical program, right? So yeah, basic stuff here, hand signals, sutures, uh, maybe some ties on passers. Uh, what is a different on a passer and a free tie? How to pass that to the doctor, right? So we'll try to do that a little bit. I also, on the next video, will extend out from that, right? I got kittners, and as you can see there, cotinoids. I'm sorry, these are <laughs> not cotinoids. These are kidners uh, and some cotinoids, suture boots. Obviously, we have um, some clip appliers or boats and how to load those up and what is the purpose of those. We also got a skin stapler, we got a Raytech, and I'll add on to this based on some things that I find that students have trouble with. But let's start with the basics, right? Hand signals, right? We'll start off with some basic stuff there. Hand signals is important because most doctors in uh, at the surgery side are not going to say anything. They're obviously going to anticipate that you know, right, what they're going to need next. At least a good tech will anticipate that. But they'll use hand signals, and some are just common sense, right? Um, scissors, right? Easy. When do you use scissors? Suturing, there's another hand signal, right? Doctor just like this, he needs a stitch. So look for those, right? They're anticipating scissors, right? Just not doing that because it looks funny. Pickups, right? Or forceps, however you call it. They all go hand to hand. So if I'm suturing, you know you need an adsin with teeth, and right behind that is some scissors, a straight mayo. Some basic hand signals, top three right there, that are G rated. <laughs> so yeah, you got the hand signals down, right? Scissors, pickups, sutures. So Sutures itself, as you can see, this comes in an eight pack here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Making sure that we have all sutures, those are countable items. But loading this up, let's see if I can get a little closer for you guys to kind of see that, right? It's really important to stabilize yourself. It's called a ring forcep, or a ring needle driver, right? Put your needle in here, put your index finger here to stabilize yourself. But if you're not sure where to load it up, you can see right on there, right? You're loading that up right at where the extension is. Click that out. So typically it's right on where it's located. You don't want it all the way in where it's like that, right? You want it right on the tip, about three eighths of that shaft of uh, the actual needle itself. Click down. Now how do you pass this? I typically grab it, right? Right at where the actual neck is of the actual needle driver. You want to make sure, you can't really see very well, that the tip, you see the tip? That the tip is actually facing, let's say hypothetically, you're the doctor, right? And it's facing you, or at the sternum of the doctor. So I use a kind of a rule of thumb I used to play. Try this when you guys are practicing, right? You drop it, right? Doctor says reload this. 
Grab that real quick. Stabilize yourself with your belly. Because obviously you can put your hand right this to stabilize with your finger. Stabilize yourself. Right. Grab the actual neck. Grab the thread. Turn so the needle is facing the doctor's chest and pass to that doctor. Right. Why are we grabbing this? So in case it falls off to the mayo or off the side of the actual bed, we don't contaminate the actual thread itself. Practice that. I used to do it a lot of the times. Drop it. Doctor says, hey, load that up real quick. Calm. Don't stab yourself. Stabilize yourself with your chest. Turn and pass. And just keep doing that back and forth. Turn and pass. Eventually, you're going to have to go left-handed, right? And that's awfully hard, right? But that's another turn and pass kind of thing going the opposite direction. Don't start with left-handed right away until you get used to uh, doing it right-handed, right? Loading it up, grab the neck, and then turn to that doctor. Obviously, he's right-handed. And then turn, right? Turn that doctor. So the whole idea is to give it to how the doctor is going to be using it, he or she, right? If you give it to him straight up like that, not very good, right? Because the doctors can't be using that that way. He's trying to suture. So we need to give instruments or obviously sutures or clamps or whatever the case may be, how the doctor is going to be using the instrument or tool itself. Right? Pass. All right, we're moving on from sutures. All right, so passing. We went, doctor needs the scissors, right? How are we passing this? Are we throwing it at him? Sometimes you feel like you want to, don't do that. But a good indication of how I was taught is a little bit of a dangling action. So this is the doctor's hand, right? We want to make sure we put it in between our thumb and our index, right? It's kind of dangling a little bit. And we're putting that right into the doctor's hands. So doctors, they're not looking on half the time. They're just having their hand out, right? They want to make sure that they feel that, right? Orthopedic guy, yeah, get that right in the hand. Neuro people, yeah, don't do that. Just kind of get it in there, right? Doctor's preference, but basically it's a little bit of a, if it's a ring, forcep, ring instrument, that technique is usually universal, right? Have the hand in between the thumb and the index kind of dangling. I used to call them, it's not dangling, right? Hold it by the neck, right? So the doctor is typically going to use that instrument, right? If you look at a medicine bomb scissors, how they're going to use it. If he's working down this way, you know, he's looking at the field, he's asking for it. Right, and it goes in and uses it. Right, practice that. I use have a fellow student get on the opposite side. Since that's hypothetically, I'm working with you. I pass it to you. You pass it back. It might seem crazy, but add some scenarios. Right, add some pressure back and forth. Put a bunch of instruments down. And just keep naming them, passing it to each other. This is all about muscle memory. So typically, uh, we went over some suture or some. Not so true. We went over some hand signals. So just to kind of recap, and we'll touch up a little bit on some ties on passers. Right? Scissors, pickups, forceps. Right, you got it, right? So the sutures. We did some suture techniques. We showed you how to suture. These are things that you should practice, right? What about ties on passers? What are ties for? So on your field or for ligation, for tying off vessels, and making sure that you... Um, have two options available. Now you give them a free tie. So how do we do that? You know, I have them all ready to go. These are some two oak silks. However you do it, I was just taught this way. I put them in a little blue towel. I label it 2 I might have a zero or 2 L verification of what the doctor might want. Then if he wants a free tie, you're ready to go. Doctor's going to have his hand out a little cuffed out like that since I'm all by myself. I can only show you. So typically you're going to come on here, right, and the doctor is going to grab that right <laughs> they just hand that doctor so he's going to grab that right so he's going to have that hand out free tie he's just handing it to him right what about a tie on a passer we're tying off vessels right so we get the schnitz right you're nervous i would have these probably preloaded up in case you need them in a hurry you're not back here shaking like a leaf right you can see that i stabilize it on my hand or my finger there's some contrast there you can see it you want to go all the way in there, straight into the top, so it's sticking out the top. Right. Right. 
that's passed the same way. So the doctor is obviously just passed, right? giving that to the doctor, right? Now we use that to tie off some vessels. They can be also on a right angle. I've seen that on occasion. Technique doesn't really change. Stabilize that, right? It's a ring force up, have your hand in there, stabilize it with your little index finger. Come on in. Again, as long as it's sticking out the top, can you see that? Probably not. And just pass that the same way. Having a little variety, I would have these loaded up. Let's have a couple of these loaded up here. Doctor asking for a tie. Tie and pass for coming your way, sir. Come your way, doctor. Don't wait on me. Continue your surgery. Boom. Have these preloaded, right? I'm telling you. You give one to the doctor, he wants one right behind it, you got one ready to go. Sometimes they want them on schnitz. Typically, it's going to be on the uh, tonsil clamp, right? Or maybe have the right angle doctor's preference based on if it's vascular or not. That's about 10 minutes in. Basic techniques. That just sum up a little bit. Some hand signals, sutures, right? pickups, sutures, passing that suture so the tip's facing that doctor. I would drop it a couple of times, load it up. It's all about muscle memory, right? Ties on passers, right? How to pass an instrument in general, Mets and ball, make sure the hand, it's in the hand and you're dangling a little bit so the doctor can feel it. That's a good rule. So if I'm asking for that, I, want, I don't want to have what looks better, this or having a firm grip of it and getting that right into that doctor's hands. Yeah, the second is better, right? And some tie-on passes, right? And don't forget, some free ties. All right, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you want to subscribe, obviously, you're going to see an addition of this video uh, on some more advanced. We'll go over some kittners, some cottonoids, some sutures on, some suture boots, what are the purpose of suture boots, uh, how to pass cottonoids, how to staple properly on skin staplers. And obviously, I didn't go over this. Here's a bonus one. Since you stuck around, here's a Raytac, right? This is the Forrester sponge stick, right? Everyone in the mother knows how to load up a Raytac. How it verify the way the doctor likes it. Loading up a sponge stick is with a Raytac is obviously there's a lot of opinions on it. I typically, I'll show you my way. At the Raytac, I just fold that in half. And you can see me, I just lay that down right in the middle of it. And I kind of level up where the tips are right at the top. And I tuck it one as deep as I can into the center. And I go at the other end as tight as I can to the middle before I clamp down. As soon as I get a good clamp, right? And that's typically how I would do a sponge stick. It's good for dabbing, general GYN. Doctors have different ways. I think there's about three other different ways I've learned before. I would verify with your physician or your doctor you're working with because they might have a certain way they want their sponge deck. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for watching. That was my little addition on some basic techniques. We we're going to stem off from these videos and include some draping, uh, include some other ideas. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. Hey, don't forget also, I'm going to leave. Watch these other videos. There's some good lab experience and there's some CST on the bottom and my face is over there for anyone that wants to subscribe. Because remember, if you subscribe, uh, you can get some, um, hit that bell icon, you'll get some notifications for when I update, update these videos. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.